week. Are we there? Doing anything? No. Yeah. I wasn't not doing anything. Recording, 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 brilliant, we're recording. Fantastic. <clears throat> Ooh, I can suddenly see Andrew's, um, there we go, there we <laughs> Hi and welcome. Um, with me I've got, um, Alex, do you want to say a little bit about who you are? Um, okay, so um, I'm Alex Digby West. Um, I'm, uh, well, I was originally called as a community outreach worker uh 11 years ago now and the start of my journey was to um set up a, a lone parents support group called smile connect and it was through that journey that um i sort of like had more of a a, a realization of what how jesus's healing can happen um in everyday life out in the community and um created different spaces for single parents to come together and it was through all of that that um i got reeled into a, a bigger project called the powerhouse which is looking to build a cultural and community center focused on well-being and the creative arts Fantastic. And, and Jackie, do you want to say a little bit about who, who you are? I sound like, do you ever remember a blind date where, where Stella Black you say, what's your name and where do you come from? Except that was a very poor attempt at Liverpool. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm Jackie. I'm from uh, Jackie Davis. I'm from Bristol. Um, I have served as a minister in an Elam church uh, a particular period of my life, and I've been involved in different things such as uh, church planting and church leadership. Um, I'm currently um, sort of not not involved in church, church leadership, but I, I, I love uh, sharing the gospel with people in sort of ways that I can. And sort of during the lockdown, we started a Sunday school out in a local par park. When I say a Sunday school, really, we just started telling Bible stories. And I'm always looking for ways and thinking about ways that we can engage with um, people, particularly in this climate and this changing climate. So for Christmas, what can we do? How can we be out there? You know, and I'm just kind of yeah, always thinking about ways to, to get involved in sharing the gospel with Jesus and bringing others on that journey. Brilliant. And, and Andrew, do you want? Thank you. And um, yeah, that's fantastic. And Andrew, do you want to say a little bit about who 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 you are and what you do? Oh, you're. Oh, I'm, I think you're, you're you're muted. I think you've muted yourself, Andrew. I muted myself because of the dog barking, uh, a workman just turned up and I had to move rooms. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm Andrew Leakey. I come from uh, Poole and now living back in Poole. Uh, I was ordained as a pastor many years ago. I've been involved in church planting and establishing a number of churches in different parts of the country. Um, I'm no longer sort of leading a church, uh, but I'm helping to sort of father uh, and have input in in a number of churches in venezuela in uganda and in a very small part of america so really i think my main sort of thing at the moment is learning to live as more and more as just a, a son of the father for myself and helping others to live as sons and daughters that would be my main uh, emphasis right now in whatever the situation is so yeah i think that sums up as best i can but thank you <laughs> It's, it's hard it's hard when people it's hard to sum up your entire who you are in for just a, a few moments on um <laughs> on a um on on a a, a a thing like this but um one thing we've been trying to do over the last couple of weeks we've been looking at um words works and wonders which is maybe maybe not the best title but the idea of mission or outreach or whatever you call it is best um described by um what we do, what we say, and actually the fact that God is the one who's actually orchestrating it all and <clears> involved <throat> in it all. And, um, and so we say so words, works and wonders is a little bit of a, a thing saying what we, do, what we say, what we do and what God does. I wonder what your thoughts are on that as a sort of little, little co concept. Anyone do you want to jump in? Can I jump in? Go for it, I. Um, Actually, for me, it's actually started with doing a lot of listening. Mm. So rather than speaking, um, it's about listening to what is going on in the community, what is, and then and wandering around, basically. That's how I've done my work in 
asking where I'm led and who who I'm led to and listening to them mm-hmm. and hearing their stories I yeah. suppose and then out of that speaking words and doing works yeah I mean John Snott the um who's a fairly famous um British theologian and evangelist said um what was it now um called it double listening the idea about listening to God's word what God says Mm -hmm. and listening to Mm -hmm. God's world what he's doing there Mm -hmm. and actually that the best that kind of um listening is that that double listening of of, of both but yeah and I think that's I think that's true sort of word you know because actually we also have this emphasis on the fact that we have to speak as actually often it's often listening is is quite key and actually to maybe you can listen a lot but only say two or three things but actually (laughs) better to say a little bit that's God ordained than um, a lot that's maybe just us. And I, and I find sort of like I can I can um, be a bit undercover if you like, and um, even speak scripture without yeah. people knowing that it's scripture, and sort of like just finding the keys to unlock hearts. Really. Yeah. I don't know whether the I don't know whether the other two um, find this. Both of us being all three of us being sort of um, not exactly former vicars, but maybe. <laughs> Maybe undercover or, 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 or you know, sort of, yeah. makes it sound like work for the CIA or something, you know, like super agents or something. Agent. <laughs> so I, think, I, think people, I think people talk to, to me now, knowing I was a former mm. victim, in a way that they wouldn't talk to me and think as a, as a current one. Do you know that sort of idea mm. that, you know, mm. um, yeah, I think there's something about the fact that actually not wearing a collar and you're, and you're just another ordinary person, but you've had that something of that journey does actually enable something quite interesting to interesting to happen. I don't know if that's anything that either, either of you two resonate with. So. Jackie, do you want to say <laughs> yeah, anything then? You don't have to, that was just <laughs> my thought. <laughs> I just want to give the opportunity um, first. If Yeah, I mean, I, I find I mix in a completely different circle than I did mm. uh, in my church, you know, when I guess I was serving in, in leadership. Yeah. And it, it's not necessarily something which comes up in conversation um and but when it does i you know it it, often the reaction is interesting and i've got people who you know they'll introduce me as oh this is a pat you know this is jackie this is pastor jackie or reverend jackie and i'm like (laughs) you know brethren (laughs) we're just brothers you know we're just friends and things um but i just think actually i what's really important for me is we've got to strip away from titles Mm -hmm. and just be ourselves yeah um and, and for me when um, Alex mentioned about kind of listening, that, that indeed for me is, is the, the way that I'm moving now. I'm trying to tune in more to what God is saying and to what God is doing. And in terms of word works and wonders, I would ask the word, I would add the word whispers and stuff. And, you know, so out of the, the stuff we ended up doing in, in a park for, for a lot of the summer, uh, in terms of the Sunday school, that really came out of a whisper from God, you know, and I'm asking him, uh, what about Christmas, you know? It's not cancelled, but so what's your whisper for Christmas that, you know, what way can we engage um, in it? Or do you want us to engage, you know, uh, in it as we can't do the, tr- the things that we've done traditionally or we won't see the traditional uh, church programs um, that we've had before? And that doesn't come out of me being, um, a, you know, a former leader. It just become it, that comes out of my desire just to see the gospel mm. shared, to use opportunities like Christmas, um, which I think there's an open door. And I think particularly now more than ever before, we really get to the heart of the message. It's, you know, suddenly all of that material stuff that for years we've been trying to get away from, is actually gone because people don't have the resources and the money. So actually they might be able to hear more clearly um, the whisper of God in the coming of Jesus in the seed form. So, yeah that, that that's kind of where i'm at in terms of um how people might engage with me as a minister i i don't need to put it on a platform um i don't need to have raise it in conversation i have no more authority than anybody else you know because the bottom line is we're all ordained and we're all citizens mm-hmm. of the kingdom there's mm-hmm. a level i love the fact that there's now a level playing field i'm not you know yeah there's a level playing field you know <laughs> yeah. so, I was like, preach it, Jackie, brilliant. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, think so, I think it's so true. And I love the whispers, actually, because I there's there's something about that, um, that there's a verse that says, unless the Lord builds, then the labourers 
labour in vain. Unless the law builds a house, mm -hmm. the labourers labour in vain. And actually, so often, you know, people are like, say, oh, this is a great, a great project. They're doing it at HGB. They're, this is such a great project. I went to a conference. <laughs> this is a great project. Looked at this amazing resource. And you're like, well, you know, you have the, the one thing you haven't said is that you feel God's telling you to do it. <laughs> and actually, you think, unless, <laughs> unless, you know, I was asked at an interview, um, what my what my vision was and i was like well um basically it comes from the that little bit of um of john's gospel where mary says to the um the servants do whatever he tells you <laughs> it's not a good it's not a great fancy you know sort of seven points plan all beginning in itty but actually try and try and hear what god's saying and sort of do it <laughs> um yeah, yeah what, what was it was it i can't remember what the advert was but it was one one, one some drink no nike wasn't it it was just do it, which I think is not not, not a bad not a bad adage for, for mission, really. Yeah. Mm. So, anyone else got any thoughts on words, works, and words, works, and wonders on, on that? Andrew, what what do you reckon? Yeah, I I mean I totally agree with what you're all saying. It is learning to be citizens of the kingdom and sons of the father, daughters of the father. That that's really what we need to help the whole church understand, rather than looking to celebrate celebrities if you like we need to celebrate the individual and the body rather than celebratory celebra celebrities yeah is that right i said that yeah um and for me i mean because we're talking about wonders uh, you know i, th I think the, the whole supernatural thing i remember um one of the most beautiful things that's happened to me and by the grace of god i've seen a lot of god doing miracles over the years as i'm sure you have um but the, the most lovely thing I think that's happened to me, or one of the most lovely things was actually at a wedding. And um, it wasn't a Christian wedding. There was no, nothing about God in it at all. And some of my, it was one of my cousins, second cousins who was getting married and we'd gone through the whole thing. It was actually really lovely, really beautiful. And we obviously were invited to be there. And um, right at the end, I hadn't had a chance to say goodbye to three of my girl cousins um, who, who were there. We were shooting off. I said to Chris, I've got to go to the other side. And the, the reception was there. Everyone was drinking and having fun and so on. I said, I've got to go and, and say goodbye. And she said, um, she said, oh, 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 that's another hour then. And I went, no, no, I'm, I've just got to go and say goodbye. <laughs> she knows me too well. So I literally went um, to say goodbye. And one of my cousins said, uh, I've been watching you on Facebook. And I think she never you know she didn't really comment on there she's i've been watching you 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 into this healing thing aren't you and i went well I do pray for healing for people and she said well i've got this problem anyway it went from there and she let me pray well god didn't heal the thing she was asking for but he did heal literally right there something had been causing her problems and stopping her from working actually it was something quite different he heard, healed her on the spot and then her sister said can you do that for me too and i said well and it was a standing start you know there's no worship nothing and I'm going god if you don't turn up now I'm in trouble you know it's about him you know it's reliance on him in it mm -hmm. and so I prayed for her and she was shocked she was a bit drunk at the time and was being a bit flirty even with me and I was a cousin you know what I mean and the Lord just touched her and and healed her wrist and she just had a pre you know op operation and the third one who was the youngest who went from the, the oldest to the middle to the youngest couldn't move her neck um, she could do this but not the other way and I said, well, how did you do that? And she said, well, uh, I was 30 and I, and, and I was doing a handstand. <laughs> I did my neck in. We're like, well, mine, that was brave doing that at 30. But prayed for her and just invited. I just said, look, I'm going to invite Jesus to come and this, declare this is just the kingdom of heaven and going to break the power of trauma in your neck and we just invite the Lord to come. We did. And she went, like, whoa, everybody went, whoa. And the guys had their backs turned to me on purpose, you know, because they're not going to get involved. And her son turned around and then he dropped his beer. His mouth got mm. said, Mum, you can't do that. And she said, <laughs> I can now. And another of my cousin's husband was there with his back. And she said, how did you do that? And, and he said, and he's not a believer either. He said, it's just being a channel, isn't it, Andrew? And I went, you're dead right. And then they said, did oh, anyone man. else like... Would anyone else like um, prayer? Man. You know, and, and the guys go, no thanks, they all turned away. <laughs> but I, I walked out of there on air oh, and I was totally stunned because all I did was go and say goodbye and they <laughs> brought it up. God came in and I go away feeling I've just been in a 
the most amazing service, if you like, <laughs> that I've, you know, but it wasn't a service and we don't use that word, but you know, I, I, it was just amazing. And then you just remembered again, it, you know, we just be ourselves, be available, listen, be available to love people. And, and if we're open to God and what he wants to do, we can see more than we can dream sometimes. So, <clears throat> you know, so that was a, just a, a beautiful thing. And, and, um, I could never forget that. It's still one of well, everything I've seen and seeing some stuff. That's one of the most beautiful things because of where it happened and who it happened to, you know, just and incredible can, really. So. And, can I, and can I ask Angie, we, did you do that all under the, in under the hour? <laughs> she, she said that's an hour gone. <laughs> no, it was, it was about, she was about right. It was about an hour or an hour and a half because she came and joined me and then we just continued to talk and just couldn't miss the opportunity. So no, I'm afraid not. My wife knows me too well. She was, she knows him too well too. And it was, uh, no, we were, we were over an hour, I think, at that point. So Andrew, can I ask you why you don't consider that to be service? Oh no, I service, I, I was saying what I meant was, you know how we call Sunday services and worship? That's what I mean. But I think it's being redefined, Andrew. Absolutely, I think the but yeah, it's no. being redefined to, to, to those moments because I think absolutely it's always meant to be when Christ yeah. showed up. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's for me. It's like it's it's living out and serving. Yeah. Yes, but as is as is a church service in an official with all the structure. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying this was yeah, better for me than yeah. than anything. So I'm totally on board with, you know, yeah. you're absolutely yeah. right. Spot on. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jackie. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think as the church, we've kind of like think that healing can only happen in which is what you're saying is that healing can only happen in the church service after you've worshipped, after, you know, you've repented and you've done your business with God and then you can heal. And it's actually it, it's almost like, well, actually, you don't as long as we're doing that regularly anyway, out of our yeah. love relationship, you don't need to go to a service to make it happen. And it taps into what we, we've kind of like been talking, Andrew, about the, and I think Andy as well, um, about the, the Celtic way. Mm. And that it's about, there's no separation between the sacred and the secular, that, that this is a holy moment, even though I'm sat in my, my friend's yeah, house, yeah. you know, everything's a sacred moment. Yeah. And that that's the point. And I even declared that exactly to a friend that I, I visited recently. And she, I, I had deliberately not wanted to bring up God. I've been praying for her. I've connected with her online more than I did in real life. A few years ago, I know her through the music community and um she brought god up and we were talking and, and i even stood in her kitchen in the middle of the new forest going this is a sacred moment this is a holy moment and this is with a non-christian she said yeah you're right <laughs> it was just and i think that you know people out in the world are seeing it a lot more than 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 we realize yeah. as well I think there's a real danger in the fact that we've done all our God stuff behind closed doors in buildings, yeah. rather than when you look at Jesus, That's what I mean. his, his, him doing the God stuff, occasionally he healed yeah. people in the temple. I mean, he killed, healed the lady with the bad back and the man with the withered hand. But most of the people he healed on the streets, in the marketplace, where, yeah. in the house, in the homes, um, you know, out and about. And actually we seem to sort of make it very much, you almost like <laughs> come to the hospital and get <laughs> sorted at church rather than actually that God's actually equipped all of us, and that not, normally I'd end up being paid for by the ministry team or at least the, or the vicar or something. <laughs> all of us as Christians, all of us as followers of Jesus, can do it any place, any time, mm -hmm. anywhere. The, the bit I find hard with that, if I'm honest, the, the bit that makes me more scared of the wonders bit, is actually it's that stepping into a risk. You're actually, you're, you know, that sort of bit where you're, you know, it's, I'm, I'm praying and I know that God wants to bless. But there's still a step, of, there's always that step of faith to say, actually, can I pray for you? Can I, can, yeah. can, would you like me to pray for you? And um, worried that they might say no, or worried it might, I might end up, you know, but actually the more I've done it, actually the more God's shown up, but then I still get nervous about it. But I realise that's just yeah. part of being a human being. Looks like, yeah. was that a hand up, Andy, Andrew? Yeah, no, I, it was a couple of things. I, I just wanted to respond to that very briefly. First of all, um, I just wanted to say sorry to Jackie, because I didn't mean to talk over you forgive me for talking over you when you were talking it's a bit different on zoom isn't it and i i should have kept quiet let <laughs> no, you finish before i responded so no. first of all forgive me for that secondly <clears throat> in that in that um event that i just described to you at the wedding i mean literally i went across they asked me when they asked me to pray it was like that it was total quotes risk i didn't feel anything 
it was just like it was a, just a nice time i didn't particularly feel the presence of god i didn't particularly feel full of faith or anything like that it was more like my prayer inside was really theological you know like help <laughs> you know yeah. god show up please come and do something because i need you right now and i'm thinking god i hope this works you know i mean that sounds like a man full of faith doesn't it i hope this works you know and prayed and just waited and and he did it and and just more and more i think when we realize it's not us that does it and yet it is through us it, i've seen more more sort of fruit that way really but it all started with absolutely i, I remember uh, what wimber said john wimber used to say years ago faith is spelled r i s k and it still holds true. Um, it is, but you're risking it on God's faithfulness. Yeah, you're risking it on God's goodness. Really, brilliant, fantastic. We probably need to come into to land. Has anyone got anything burning they want to say as a sort of final, as a final sort of um, thought to go out with? A, a sort of inspiration to actually not just hear a few of us chatting about stuff, but to actually, yeah, encourage people to actually go and um, just do it as a night thing. Has anyone got a thought or anything they'd like to? Close with I think, Jack, you like about to say something. I just go back to um, where you said, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. Yeah. And God is rebuilding his temple. Oh, man. And here's yeah. the thing it was never meant to be built by human hands, and that's what we made it. Yeah. We are the temple of God, yeah. and in him dwells all of God's glory, all of um, heaven's ability, and all of heaven's power. And so in this season, He's going to use us. And I tell you, Andrew, what you shared about the wedding, how like, how like Christ is that? You know, mm. the very first miracle he ever performed was yeah. at the wedding, the wedding. you know? Yeah. Um, and, and so God is doing a new thing. We're prepared, he's prepared his bride. We're ready to go. And we just need to believe, you know? Sure. And, it, and it's not us on trial, sorry, in terms of the issue about risk. At the end of the day, if God doesn't show up, well, that's his problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah. he's the one. It's his name. Totally. It's not our name, actually. It's not our name. That's Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. It's him. <laughs> if you can't heal this, then well, I don't know what You know, so he wants to honor his name. He wants to reveal yeah. himself. Oh, man, he's right. more desperate. So he just wants us to be available to him. But oh, thank you so much, Andy, for putting this together. No, really bless you. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah. And also, I just want to just uh, add, um, to encourage others that are scared of stepping out and not wanting to take the risk. My experience, and I, I haven't done it a lot, and I'm also someone who gets a bit scared of stepping out, but from what I've seen, he tends to show up. It, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that, and it, even if it's not, you can't see something happen there and then, hmm. once somebody's gone away and processed or had a night's sleep which is a uh, you know where stuff can also happen i've i've yeah i he, he he always does something yeah. even if it's not <laughs> totally yeah yeah it might not do it, so, might not do it as uh, the way we want the way we expect right. or the way we we, we yeah. plan because jesus seems to like being unpredictable really <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, but I, I i guess it's trusting the fact that god will be working because he's good is good yeah. anyway we're almost we're almost um running out of time so um bless you guys and thank you so much you for, for this little, little uh, Alex, you too. You. yeah and bless. you jackie lovely to see you jackie <laughs> yeah bless, bless you guys and thank you so thank you so much for this okay. and i will put we'll it together and I'll, I'll, I'll send it send it over to you and cool. then take care thanks bless andy thanks, thanks alex andy. Bye. 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 bye 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 bye